Okay, hi everybody, my name is John Lincoln from Ignite Visibility, and today I'm going to teach you about conversion rate optimization. Now, these are a lot of uh, my favorite strategies and some stuff from around the web, but I've been doing CRO, conversion rate optimization, for a long time now, uh, almost a decade, and uh, I'm really excited to share some of these strategies with you. So let's go ahead and take a look. So the first thing that I have is for your website, make sure that you have a really basic color scheme, right? We're not back in the 80s where there's all those, you know, different techno bright colors anymore, right? You want everything to be very muted, everything to be very clean. The main thing that you want to jump out is your call to action. When you take a look at this right here, what's the only thing that you see on this uh, whiteboard right here? It's your call to action right in the middle, right? So keep it simple. You only want two to maybe four colors total on your page, right? Keep it clean and make sure that your call to action is brighter than everything else on the page. When you land on that page, when your user does, you want them to see your call to action front and center more than everything else so that they know the main goal of the page. And every single web page should only have one main goal and then potentially two secondary goals. Those secondary goals can also be brighter colors as well, but they shouldn't be as bright as your main call to action, okay? They should be more muted and they shouldn't detract from the overall kind of light color scheme of the page. They should just be other things that kind of attract the user's eye in as well um, so they can complete those also. Now we come, when we get into a page templates, um, your page should have limited options and the main thing that the user should be focused on is the main goal front and center of the page. And the way that I like to structure it on a page is first I like to have a title, then I like to have a really quick sales pitch. I'm talking about for lead generation sites here, right? I like to have a quick sales pitch and then a call to action right there, right? They land, they, they see the quick sales pitch exactly why they should be signing up for this lead gen or this freemium model. They, they click it and then they convert, right? And that's, it. that's exactly how you want to structure it. Now, not everybody is going to convert right away, right? Some people need more information. Now this is a little bit different between desktop and mobile, but I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. But basically, if they need more information, what you want to do is you want to put that underneath your main call to action. So they come in, they get their elevator pitch, call to action, and then secondary information right underneath that, okay? Now when you get into categories, right, and now we're talking categories more of an e-commerce site, right, and keep in mind that every different website has a different goal, right? There are sites that are information sites, there's branding sites, there's e-commerce sites, and there's lead generation sites, right? There's a lot of different types of websites out there, all with their own specific goals, right? And there's also news sites, right? Those are the five types, and news sites are more focused on things like uh, page views and time on site and things like that, where a lead generation site is more focused on specific leads, an e-commerce site, direct sales, right? So we're talking about category pages here, right? And category pages specifically on an e-commerce site. Now in this case, you're going to want your products to be clear and very easy to sort. You want to make sure that you have a clear navigation, and if they can't find things through your navigation and through your subcategories, you're going to want to make sure that you have a search box so that they can always jump in and they can search and use that site search in order to find specifically what they're looking for, okay? All right, so, you know, back in the landing pages just a little bit. So, you know, we talked about the quick pitch and the call to action and further information, but here are some other things that I really like to do on landing pages and they're gonna work very well for you. And I know for sure that this works because I've structured um, you know, websites that do millions and millions of dollars in this way, and they've converted very, very well, okay? So first, start off with your pitch and your main call to action, right? Then, if, if they don't convert right away, you give them a little bit of further information down the page. Um, but after that, they're gonna need more social proof, right? They're gonna need more proof that you're really credible and you're the, the, the site that they should be signing up for, they should be putting the lead on, um, what have you. So. Other things you can do is you can list companies that you have worked with. You can list news and press that you've been. Have you been featured on Forbes? Have you been featured on you know, uh, one of these major publications, Entrepreneur, Inc. Magazine? You're gonna wanna list that there. Um, and then also, you wanna list testimonials, right? Real people who like your product. 
Now, in addition, another thing that I like to do is I like to list case studies, white papers, blog posts that you've written. So what you're doing is on this landing page, you're giving them all the best things that, they, that you've ever done surrounding this specific, specific service that you're selling in a very segmented basis, right? You start off with your elevator pitch, you give them more information, you show them companies that you've worked with, you show them news publications that you've been featured in, uh, you show them social proof, you show them articles you write, and then you end that all with one more call to action at the very bottom of the page. So if they've read all that, you know, they should be convinced by then. If they're not, then they can go ahead and, and bounce off the page, right? Okay. So we talked about landing page elements, and now I'd like to jump into mobile versus desktop. So the difference between mobile and desktop is people on mobile, they want really quick call to actions, and they want to get things done fast, right? Desktop, they'll spend a little bit more time browsing. But on mobile, you want to have quick calls to action. You want to have an easy tap target so that when somebody lands, they can immediately get what they want. They want instant gratification. They're on their phone. They don't have a ton of time. They're not sitting there just lounging. They want to get what they came there for right away, okay? So you don't want to go the tile design, design route, right? Instead, you want to have quick, easy buttons that they can click on and jump right into to what they're looking for. And a lot of times, I like to have an expanded navigation on the homepage that has your most important items that you want to focus on. I've done this for a couple sites. One of the sites we did this with, we increased the revenue 50K a month on mobile just by increasing their conversion rate with an expanded navigation. Okay? So less information, nice, easy, and clear. Um, also, split testing. Now, when we get into split testing, this is something that you should definitely be doing for conversion rate optimization. I recommend Google Content Experiments or Optimizely, two great tools uh, to, in order to facilitate your split testing um, so that you can find out you know, which uh, performs better. So that's almost all my items, but I have a couple bonus things for you to chew on from the conversion rate optimization perspective. Uh, one, your checkout process. Make sure you're reducing the amount of fields that you need. You're making it so that people don't have to log in so they can check out as a guest. And you're making as few steps as possible. And in that checkout process that you use the same color scheme rationale, very muted, the only main things that they see are the fields that they need to fill out, as well as the buttons that they need to click on to go from step one to step two to step three to eventually complete the checkout process, right? Um, Think about post-conversion. So after they've converted, are they getting upsells? Do they have you know, five minutes to get this extra other offer? Um, do you show them related products that people also purchased? Just by adding a couple post-conversion items, right, options, you can increase your sales significantly, right? Um, give them a discount, a potential discount on something that you have extra in stock, right? Um, another thing that I really like to do, and this is another bonus for you, try a timer on your site, right? Are the holidays coming up and you know, are you having a Black Friday sale? You know, if you are, put a timer on your site. Let people know that, you know, there's one day left, you know, 10 hours, you know, 20 minutes and 15 seconds. When they see that, there's a sense of urgency. So it really makes it so that they want to convert, right? And then the last thing that I have for you is nudges. So one of the really big things that we're seeing now is people testing nudges, right? So something that comes out in, in the bottom of the page and says, um, do you blog? Would you be interested in this guide, right? Um, you know, what do you think about this, this, this particular service? We have X amount off today, would that interest you? So little nudges that come on the page and they influence the psychology of the user and then push them further into that conversion process and increase the propensity for them to convert, okay? So these are some of my ideas on conversion rate optimization. This is really just the most basic stuff, but I hope that that was useful to you and you can use these tools and increase your conversion rate on your own website. Have a great day.